What does the universe look like? Well, you probably have a good idea at this point in your life. After all, you do live here. But would you believe me if I told you that everything you experience, every sight or smell or sound or touch or taste, is all through a filter? That nothing is organic and crude. Your body is experiencing these senses only after a refining process in the brain. But to be fair, our senses were never all encompassing kinesthetics in the first place, and were never meant to be. We are unable to look at sound waves, or hear light waves, or see the colors of thoughts, or taste emotions, or follow the electromagnetic currents. We are not snakes that can taste the air with its tongue and then press the roof of its mouth to its smell receptors, nor can we see infrared light. We are not sharks with remote touch and a smell sense that can detect one part of blood in one billion. Sensing the electrical fields given off by animals is another trait we lack. Humans see at 60 frames per second. Dragonflies can see at 300 frames per second. Were a dragonfly to watch a movie, can see each and every frame of that movie as a slideshow. A yellow flower to us appears as blue or purple or green or black to bees and butterflies that can see in the ultraviolet light spectrum. We cannot feel a lightning storm gathering like birds, nor the subtle vibrations of an earthquake before it strikes as cats do. We do not hear sounds in the high frequency range, denying access to abilities like echolocation, as observed in bats and dolphins. We cannot communicate over miles with deep, low frequency noises like giraffes and elephants. Our perception is through a lens. All that is occurring is our body's response to particles and wavelengths. We simply lack certain biologic instruments. Had we olfactory receptors on our fingers, we could taste aroma particles with a wave of our hand. Even some worms can taste the light particles. It all depends on how a particular organism processes the often invisible molecules and electromagnetic waves around it. No matter how advanced or complex a sensing organ is, it is still just a filter. But we are not as limited in experiencing the universe as it seems. We can learn and train to sense more. We can reduce our filter. Take synesthesia, for example, a rare birth condition in which a person processes senses differently, such as hearing sounds, as well as seeing those sounds as colors. Synesthesia can also be induced by psychedelic chemicals, such as with lysergic acid diethylamide. Divination is a practice that goes back thousands and thousands of years. But what is it really? As we learn more about the world around us, we can understand that divination is an awareness and a sensitivity to electromagnetic fields. There are generally three types of divinations humans have practiced throughout different cultures, both currently and historically. The first is through a medium of some sort. This includes scrying rods, crystals, tarot cards, mirrors and reflections, palmistry, observing weather phenomena, witnessing animal behavior, to name a few. The second method is through altered states of consciousness, often drug or chemically induced. This includes the oracles, shamans, spiritualists, and religious prophets. Meditation can fall under this category, as it releases certain brain chemicals, such as dopamine, melatonin, and possibly dimethyltryptamine, while being awake in a brain state closer to sleep than wakefulness. Siddhartha Gautama's 39-day meditation is an obvious example of this form of divination. Fasting and starving can cause various highs as well. The third form of divination is through intuition. While each method can be completed by itself, most often, intuition is involved in all of them. Just as often, is the use of all three methods at the same time. And what is intuition? It is defined as a thing that one knows or considers, likely from instinctive feeling rather than conscious reasoning. Really, though, intuition is an electromagnetic sensitivity. If we could see, unfiltered, all the electromagnetic fields and currents around us, we wouldn't have a hard time believing in things like magic, alchemy, and divination, which, unknowingly, electromagnetism is the reason why those practices exist. Take scrying rods, used to find sources of water. By divining the path to water, a scryer is able to locate and dig for water. Observed in nature are elephants that will wander far from their normal feeding grounds during dry seasons to seemingly dig a random hole in the ground. Water, of course, is found. Birds are highly electrosensitive, and it is thought that their beaks can pick up different changes in the Earth's magnetism, especially useful during migration periods. Interestingly, Humans have small amounts of magnetite in the bones of the cranial cavity. Magnetite is the most magnetic metal naturally found in Earth. Chakra, Chi, Prana, Odd, Ki, Mana, Spirit, all are energy principles believed by different humans for thousands of years across a wide range of cultures. 
common factor for all of these is the belief that all living and non-living objects contain this energy. What science today has discovered is that electricity exists in all things, even if only in the form of electrons and protons on the atomic level. We can train different sensitivities and perceptions. Some people claim to be able to see auras, likely electrical fields naturally emitted by an individual. People can feel storms before they occur, as the pressurized air causes aches in their bones, or by feeling the electrical charge when a thunderstorm is about to start. Humans can smell the chemical released when others are afraid. We are not inherently born knowing how to sense all the things our bodies are actually capable of. We can train these in ourselves, but knowing and experiencing different feelings is the first step. There have been a couple cases of blind humans learning echolocation, an obvious example of developing a new trait that is not inherited genetically or evolutionarily. When cats hunt, especially for big cats like lions and tigers, they always try to take down their prey by the neck. That seems like a logical place to aim for, as it is a common vulnerable spot amongst most mammals. Yet, what biologists discovered in animals like goats, deer, and rodents is potentially groundbreaking. They found that applying enough pressure to the ears of those animals can induce paralysis. Muscle control is a basic principle of acupuncture, which is based off of meridians, where energy flows throughout the body. Apply a sharp pressure to a key point along the meridian, and the flow of energy can either be released or blocked completely. We know that electrical signals have to travel to and from the brain in order to exert muscle control. Intriguingly, cats have been discovered to be able to see, or at least sense, X-rays, a wavelength at a frequency far higher and faster than anything humans can naturally see. Perhaps it is not far-fetched to say that some cats are able to sense the electrical flow of their prey in order to find the best pressure point to bite down on. Feng Shui, or geomancy, is a practice of basing your life and home around certain natural flows of the Earth's energy. Clearly, a level of electromagnetic sensitivity is at play here. Electromagnetism is a bridge between modern scientific understanding and traditional and ancient beliefs and practices. Neither disproves the other, and as we are learning, they both open the same door to understanding and removing the filters we experience the universe in, even if from completely different angles. In conclusion, the universe, as far as we can understand from our limited perspective, is an amalgamation of trillions of microscopic particles and incomprehensible stretches of electrical waves bouncing, attracting, and repelling these molecules in wonderful displays of color and vibrations. What we see are the filters our body has learned to experience through this energetic universe we exist in.